welcome to my very first floss tube. I thought it might be a good idea to do this sort of thing while so many of us are in isolation and in lockdown. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do was when I do these videos is to perhaps as much as possible wear a piece of embroidered clothing. So this shirt that I have on today is embroidered. It's probably quite difficult to see. It's just got an embroidered front yoke. Hard to show you. Hmm. Yep. And it's embroidered in simple chain stitch with some beading. Um, I, I made this when, for when we went to live in Ethiopia quite some years ago. It's a very soft cotton fabric and it's really lovely to wear. Um, but I love wearing embroidered clothing so I thought I would wear them in my videos as much as possible. The first piece of embroidery I wanted to show you is this little um, Biscornu from my book Early Style Hardanger. Uh, it uses quite a few different stitches than you might have seen in Hardanger before um, and I can probably try and show you them to you here, but if this doesn't work, then I might do some close-up photographs later on. So the first one I wanted to point out is this here. These are called long eyelets. They're basically buttonholes, um, but they're used uh, decoratively instead of the way we would often use them on a piece of clothing. This here is satin stitch, which you'll be familiar with. This is double cable stitch, so two lines of cable stitch together. In here, this one here, we have channel stitch. Now in Norway, this is called Ostmanerenning. Um, Ostmanerenning is a word that describes quite a few stitches. So cable stitch is also known as Ostmanerenning. And this one, which I've called channel stitch in English, is also Ostmanerenning. I would have loved to have called it Ostmanerenning, but that would have been confusing because there are other stitches that are also known by that name. So because this creates lines, I decided we'd call it channel stitch. Um, it's really difficult when you have to name a stitch because you want to give it the right name. Um, so hopefully this is a name that's appropriate for it and that the Norwegians can feel that it's the right one for the English language. Here we have picots, which are done in the Norwegian way. They are knotted picots, but they're not done in the way that many people do knotted picots. Um, I find it a little bit easier, so that's a good thing. Um, we also have dove's eyes, which you're probably quite familiar with as well. That's these ones here. And down the side, we have eyelets that are all joined together with a binding stitch in between. That's quite a common thing that they would use. And then here at the edge, we have, sorry, we have a laced cross stitch. So it's just a cross stitch which has got an extra lacing level on top of it which changes the stitch quite considerably and makes it quite beautiful. So this has worked on 35 count linen with linen thread. The thread that I've used for the satin stitch is a 50 over 3 London Dairy linen and the thread that I've used for everything else such as these, the eyelets, uh, the channel and the cable stitch and the needle weaving is an 80 over 3, which is a finer linen thread, also London Dairy linen. I did also teach this um, Biscornu at the Cruel Gobelin at one stage, and I decided it would be nice to do it in a different colour. So here we have it worked in on, on grey linen, which was 34 count, with the white thread again. And there are bits here the channel stitch here and the long eyelets. Instead of using the uh, linen thread, they use a single strand of DMC uh, stranded floss, uh, which means that I could have it in grey. So it's got a binding, uh, sorry, um, what's it called? Oh yeah, you know, one of them around the edge and then it's got other linen on the back. The purple and the grey seem to go together nicely for me. So it just shows you that you don't need to do it in white on white, you can do it in colours. I'm sure some people have already made it in garish colours that um, please them very much and don't look anything like white on white. Um, and that is your prerogative. Uh, obviously traditionally it was done in white thread on white fabric and it was linen thread on linen fabric, um, but you don't have to do it. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, there are some myths about that. Oh, I spend my life trying to bust these myths. Um, so a lot of people say to me that Hardanger should be done in 
on Harlinger fabric or Oslo fabric, which is a 22 count double weave, so meaning that it has threads that go that way over and under, so paired threads. Um, now, Hardanger embroidery was traditionally done on fabric that was either 35 count up to about 60, 65 count. It was really fine. It was not done on 22 count. So when you look at the fineness of this embroidery, they were trying to create lace. If you put that same design onto 22 count fabric, it will still look like that design, but it will be very, very chunky and coarse. That is not the look that they were going for. So how did Hardanger fabric or Oslo fabric come to be so associated with Hardanger embroidery? Well, my supposition is that um, a fabric company decided, oh, we've got a whole heap of this fabric. We need to shift it. Let's call it Hardanger fabric and therefore people will use it for Hardanger. Yeah, they might, but it shouldn't have been known as the correct thing to use. So that's just one of my little bugbears. Um, yes, of course you can use it for Hardanger, but it is not the thing you should use and it is not the thing that was traditionally used. Uh, so that's about all I wanted to say today. I hope that those of you who are in isolation or are just uh, or in lockdown that you are doing well and that your stitching is keeping you happy. Happy stitching. Bye.